Hey everybody, my name is Dragon Boy, and ever since my pen display decided to die on me, it was inevitable that I was going to have to go back into the budget options, which are pad tablets, and that's why I went out and picked up the Inspiroy H1060P by Huion. Now, I have good things and bad things to say about this, but I suppose first, we should take a look at the unboxing experience that I had. I will be putting a voiceover on it and kind of trying to shorten and cut down on it because it was a 35 minute process because I oogled a lot because this is a very pretty looking tablet. Let's go do that. So I covered up my address because I don't need any of you here coming to try and steal my coffee. I need my coffee to survive. But after sipping way too much coffee that day, I decided it was time to actually open the box and uh, I ran into something that freaked me out. Amazon thought that brown paper was enough to pad it, which it's not, definitely not. But the box, once I got my eyes on it, really impressed me. It's a very pretty box, great presentation. Initially, I was pretty impressed with the fact that Huion went ahead and foam padded the box to add a little extra protection, um, which I think benefited me this time because of Amazon's poor packing. Um, I was really happy to see that they provided an artist's glove or a smudge guard, depending on what you like to call it. The tablet itself was in a nice like rubbery plastic sleeve, which I think would protect it against uh, getting scraped and stuff because foam is relatively abrasive and if it was up against the foam, it might've got micro scratches. Then we also get like a, a carrying case which I think is pretty awesome. I probably wouldn't use it very much, but it's a nice addition. Then we have the OTG adapters for both micro USB and type C. These ones were actually made pretty well. They were made out of aluminum, I assume, rather than plastic. So pretty durable, I'd say. But then it was time to actually reveal the tablet because, oh man, was it ever pretty. Then I figured it was time to test the tablet out, so I plugged it in, got the drivers installed, opened up Paint Tool Psy, and started playing around with the uh, pen pressure and trying to draw circles. This is where I realized that the disconnect of a pad tablet versus a pen display was a little too weird for me, but I tried to push through anyway to test the tablet out. And I pretty much just tested it out for hours, and uh, that's that. And now that we're done with the unboxing experience, we can talk a bit about the good things that come with this tablet and the bad things that I've experienced with this tablet. First of all, it's got 28 hotkeys, 12 of which are physical and 16 are software. It's got a 10 by six and a quarter inch active drawing area. The tablet itself is nine inches by 14 inches, give or take 0.2 or 0.3 inches. The physical buttons are very clicky, which I very much like. It's got a hoop here to store your pen in if you're not gonna be using the included pen stand. It's got rubber feet on the bottom, so it doesn't slide around on your desk too much, which is really nice. I've had some very slip and slide tablets before. The software keys are actually up at the top. If you can't see them on the camera, I apologize. The lighting in this room is terrible. Overall, the tablet itself looks very, very fancy and it's got some weight to it, so you could probably uh, play tennis with this, although I wouldn't suggest it because it would break. Since I mentioned the pen stand, here it is. It is also a container for the eight nibs that it comes with. It's got the nib remover on the bottom. And uh, yeah, you can place the pen on here sideways by just laying it there. I'm gonna hold it there so it doesn't fall and break because I'm returning this because reasons. It can also go in vertically. I'm a little more faithful of leaving it in like that. This is a battery-free pen. It's a pretty standard Huion pen. However, it's got a nice new color scheme to it, and it's got a rubber grip rather than one of those kind of slippery sort of rubbers. This is kind of like a foam rubber. It's fairly grippy, and it's kind of flared on the end there, which I really like. I've had pens before that were like perfectly straight, and they just kind of dipped at the end and tapered, but this actually has a tapered and a flared end. It just feels more comfortable to use. 
I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. And for the amount of time I was able to experience the pressure sensitivity, I loved it because I've been stuck on 2048 for a very long time. And that's a lot more levels of pressure. <laughs> The tablet comes with the warranty card, user manual, and so forth on a pseudo CD. It's not a real CD, it just has some information on it. It also comes with an included smudge guard, which is a really nice touch because this is an extra that you usually have to buy separately, but they included it. This one's a little bit smaller than the last one that I had. I don't know if it just needs to be stretched out, but perhaps it's good that it hasn't stretched out yet because again, I'm returning this tablet because there's issues. I'll get to that in a minute. And when I say I'm in it, I mean right after I tell you that it comes with a little carrying bag, which is nice. It's a soft bag. It wouldn't protect your tablet if it got hit by something, but uh, keeps it from getting scratched, I guess. From start to finish, I installed the driver, plugged the tablet in, tried to use it, but there was no pressure sensitivity. Then I remembered after installing tablet drivers, it's generally a good idea to reboot your PC. However, the driver installation software doesn't remind you that restarting your PC is a step. So if I have a suggestion for Huion, it's to add a reminder to your driver software to reboot your PC so people don't freak out when it doesn't seem to be working. Being that I'm usually on a low budget, seeing something like that generally kind of freaks me out at first. So having a little reminder saying, hey, you should restart your computer if you want this to function as intended. Not a huge deal. I feel like most people probably remember to reboot their PC after installing anything new, but it might be a good thing to put there. Then for about three days, I struggled with the disconnect of looking at a screen while my hands off drawing somewhere else. That's just something I can never get used to but there was pressure sensitivity. I got to play around with the tilt function a little bit, got to test out the hotkeys and the software hotkeys and everything was working great. Then after testing it on my PC for like two days, I decided to unplug it to use it with an Android device, AKA my phone, and it also worked well there too. However, I think it's weird that in phone mode, it only uses a portion of the tablet rather than having the tablet switch to portrait mode and just using the whole area. I'd prefer that, but that's not necessarily a deal breaker. It's just a little bit weird. However, after unplugging it from my phone and plugging it back into my PC, the pressure sensitivity seems to have disappeared and I can't figure out why. The active area on the tablet is fully being used. It's mapped to my screen. I can go to each and every corner on the tablet and it goes to each and every corner on my display. But however, there's no pressure sensitivity. I've closed and rebooted the drivers, shut down and rebooted my PC, fiddled with some settings in the software as well as in the software I'm actually drawing in. To no avail, there's absolutely no pressure sensitivity anymore and I can't figure out why. I'd like to say perhaps because of the way Amazon packaged the tablet, maybe something got busted, but I feel like if that was the case, the issue would have shown up a lot sooner. I've been very careful with the tablet since I opened it. It's been sitting on a table separate from where I do anything. The pen has been sitting in the stand. The tablet has been plugged in or unplugged when I'm not using it. And overall, it's just, it's basically been sitting there. I've been careful with it. It's been covered with the protective film that it came in and basically to no avail. There's no pressure sensitivity anymore and I can't figure out why. My first pen display was a Huion, so I'm very familiar with the way their drivers work. And so I'm willing to say that maybe it has nothing to do with the driver itself or the tablet. Perhaps there's some weird glitch with Windows 10 that's causing it to not work, but I'm not a software engineer and I'm definitely not a hardware engineer, so I couldn't begin to know how to test for the cause of these issues. That said, I think it's a great tablet when it works. It's not really my style. Pad tablets are a little bit awkward. I just can't do the disconnect. It kind of triggers my OCD and just kind of makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I know that's a bit weird, but that's me. <laughs> That said, I'm not saying it's a bad device. While it was working, I had a pretty enjoyable experience despite the weird disconnect and kind of the OCD thing. The pen pressure was awesome having 8,192 levels of it. The smudge guard is fairly comfortable despite being a little bit tight. The tablet doesn't slide around. The hotkeys function really, really well, both the software and the hardware ones. 
having a pen stand with extra nibs in it, it's a nice touch. It's got a loop on it, so that's a nice touch. But overall, despite all those nice features and the good experience that I had with it for a while, the fact that it stopped having pressure sensitivity is a big deal breaker. So I'm gonna have to send this back and explain why. I don't know if there's something wrong with the tablet or if there's something wrong with the pen, but it's basically just been sitting there and being lightly used for the last four days. So I can't see how anything would have gone physically wrong with either of the things. Regardless, I've been Dragon Boy. Hopefully this video about the H1060P by Hueon was informative and will help you make a more informed decision. Maybe I'm the only person that's experienced these issues. Perhaps it was a defective product, it got damaged in shipping, or there's a weird glitch in the driver software. I can't tell you. Overall, all I can do is tell you about my personal experience with this device and this is the experience I had. It's a very nice looking tablet. It's very comfortable to use when it is working, but overall, it's not working for some reason. <laughs> but all that said, if it's something that you want to try out, I'll leave a link in the description below to not only the American Amazon website, but also the Canadian Amazon website where you can pick one up for yourself if that's something that you want to do still. But I digress, Hueon makes a lot of great products. I'm not bashing them for this specific thing. Again, my personal experience, and I wanted to let you guys know about it. There are links in the description below that you can check out. Give this video a like or a dislike, depending on what you thought about it. And if you wanna see more art videos or reviews from me in the future, click that big red subscribe button. Regardless, you've been incredible. I have been Dragon Boy. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys next time.